G'day, Two Slips fans. Welcome back to another mini pod. Um, for those of you that have been following the podcast for a while, you know that a topic that is uh, near and dear to my heart is growing the game in the United States. And in the last week, we have had the uh, draft for the upcoming T20 tournament hosted in the United States, Major League Cricket. Uh, it's been quite a while in the making. Um, anyone who's been familiar with the podcast have known that I've been uh, keeping tabs on not only the minor league cricket, but also the developments in the major league cricket. So they've had their domestic player draft uh, recently uh, where they've announced the names of all the teams and all the players that are natural born or domestic um, American players have been have been drafted out. So um, all international players appear to be signings, not drafts. So the teams have gone and... Um, will sign these players, which they have announced a few signings over the course of the draft. Um, but these players drafted were, were all either, you know, uh, expats that are naturalised Americans or actually American players that are that are available. Um, it was a fantastic night to be on, or over in Australia. It was, a, it was mid-morning. It was about 11.30, but it, it looked like a great night. And boy, can the United States market things. I mean, they're talking about launching a brand new enterprise over in, in the United States, brand new cricket league. Um, and uh, what a better place to host it than the um, the Kennedy Station in Houston, all about rocket launches and stuff. And like, you know, there, there's a there's a synergy there. And I, I appreciated that as being a bit of a sci-fi nerd myself in my other um, pursuits in life. Um, I, I found that a really great way to market it, you know, launching a brand new tournament in a space exploration center. Um, well done. Um, a few little mishaps with the uh, the microphones not turning on uh, at the right time for, for some of the speakers, but overall it was a fantastic, um, well-presented draft. Um, I found that the uh, the the colour commentators involved were, were very knowledgeable and offered a fantastic insight on some of the players that um, aren't you know easily known for those who don't follow um, minor league cricket or the American cricket very well. Um, the the um, yeah, the whole thing was just really well done. And one of the things that following a lot of American sport myself is the drafts tend to take so much time because there is so much waffling on so they can get in everything they need to get in. Um, and, you know, despite the fact that teams might only need a minute to draft their picks, they'll wait the full five. So there's just so much prattling on. But here, they just race through it. It was a really, it was a, a really good experience, really and I hope they don't end up drifting down that way as it gets more popular and just dragging it out for the sake of runtime like the NBA or the NFL drafts. So uh, the teams that are involved, you know, we have the uh, the Seattle Orcas, the Mumbai MI New York, Washington Freedom, the San Francisco Unicorns, the Los Angeles Knight Riders, and the Texas Super Kings, as we can see here with their with their logos. Um, you know, my only only complaint um about about this so far and it's more if it was in a vacuum it wouldn't bother me so much but uh, obviously as we've talked about there's been ipl money been uh been thrown into uh in this tournament same as the south africa one same as the uae one and uh you know there's been this push for the the uh ipl franchises to to brand their team so we're just running into having a, a lot of teams that are all named the same thing. And in my opinion, it might not be what you guys believe as well, but I think that you get, especially if you're going into a brand new market where there isn't already an established cricket fan base, which you would have to say that's likely America. It's a very niche sport in the United States at the moment. You'll get more crossover if the local audience can have some buy-in. Um, yeah, I know that the IPL is very, very popular and there's a lot of... Um, you know, Indian and South Asian um, demographics in the United States, and they might feel a, a bit of affinity between, you know, if they're a, a Chennai fan or a Mumbai fan or a Kolkata fan, might find a little bit more uh, buy-in in that sense. But you want to crack into the new market, and uh, I really think they missed a trick with, um, with New York. Uh, I mean, MI New York is a horrible name. I'm sorry, guys. I love everything that you're doing. Um, for Major League Cricket, but you've, you've dropped the ball on this one. MI New York is is an awful, awful name. Um, and New Yorkers, historically, will 
pathologically follow teams, even to the point that it affects their health. I mean, you look at the Yankees, you look at the New York Knicks, you look at the Mets, you look at the Giants and the Jets. Some of these teams have been terrible for a long time, and they just come out in droves to support their team. Like, if you crack the New York market, if you can get passionate New Yorkers following your team, you have it made, and I just feel they've really missed an opportunity to really tap into the soul of New York. Um, and find some way of, of really appealing to the New York fan base as a wider thing by giving them a team they own as opposed to an offshoot of an Indian team. And, um, you know, yeah, there's no, I don't have any issues with them having the same color scheme or maybe even having the, the Mumbai logo somewhere, like at the back of the neck or somewhere innocuous or a sleeve to show, yeah, the Mumbai Indians are, are supporting this. We're helping the American game grow, and that's how we're, we're tying it in. I mean, they're going to get their money anyway, whether they're called, you know, whether they're called the, the Yankees or the Mumbai, MI New York, whatever whatever name they give them, the money that that team generates will funnel its way back to the Mumbai franchise. So naming them MI New York isn't necessarily making them any more money. I just I feel that, and with the Texas Super Kings um, that... Um, and the LA LA Night Riders that you're just sort of maybe missing an opportunity there to really sort of ingratiate yourselves with the um, with the American market of a wider scale and get them really having a sense of ownership of of that franchise. So, and, and honestly, if it was the only time we saw it, I probably wouldn't have bugged me quite so much. But when you've got you know the South African T Twenty League and the 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 UAE T Twenty T Twenty League with the same names as well, it's all sort of getting like a bit. It's getting a little bit stale, I think, and I think that's something that the the IPL are they're going to continue throwing money into these startup franchises, which I think is a fantastic, uh, a fantastic initiative. I mean, it's growing the game. I think they just you know, they might end up cutting their own legs off a little bit in future as team like as fans sort of get over the fact that they're just sort of porting an IPL team and they want a team of their own. You know, how great would it have been to see some some names that really resonate with South Africa? Um, being sort of the team names and and United Arab Emirates sort of resonating that, but um, it is what it is. They're on, they're up there, they're uh, they're on the board. Um, that's all you can start with. And and so there's been some phenomenal players that have been picked. Um, you're looking at guys like Corey Anderson and Liam Plunkett were drafted by the uh, the the San Francisco franchise. Um, Cameron Gannon, who has had. Uh, Wondrous success um, in Australia in the Sheffield Shield. I think believe he's been the leading wicket taker in the Sheffield Shield before. Um, played Big Bash. Uh, he's managed to make it uh, as a domestic player to uh, the Seattle franchise. Um, Ali Khan and Upmak Chand uh, have who you know Upmak Chand is an under 19s captain for India and has played in the minor league cricket and just absolutely tore it apart. They're playing for the the, uh, the Los Angeles franchise. Uh, Brody Crouch for any Big Bash fans, who's a, a young upcoming um, uh, Australian player. Uh, I'm I'm not sure of his background. Probably should have looked it up, but he obviously has some American heritage in his family. He's qualified as a domestic player, and he was also signed by the San Francisco franchise. So that Victorian connection, because Victoria is obviously um, cricket, Victoria is backing. Um, the San Francisco franchise has, has sort of paid off there because they've got him. Um, and some of the international signings in big news, uh, Aaron Finch has been announced as the first captain of the San Francisco franchise, so he's going to go there. Uh, Marcus Stoinis will be joining him as well, so two uh, Australian national-level players uh, will be going to San Francisco, joining, obviously, Brody Crouch, um, uh, Liam Plunkett, Corey Anderson, so they've got the, the, the makings of a... a of a very uh, experienced side in terms of uh, international pedigree. Um, other big names, uh, Mitch Marsh and Quinton de Kock were signed by the Seattle franchise. So they've got the makings there of some really powerful batters at the top. Um, and uh, Onrek Nokia and Winindu Hasaranga were picked up by the, the Washington Freedom franchise. So... Um, yeah, there's some there's some there's some big names already in this inaugural tournament. Um, you know, and it's only going to pick up steam the more it gets. Um, the other franchises haven't really announced any of their international signings just yet. But I think if, if the players of that caliber, right, Quinton de Kock and on on Enrique Nokia, um, currently are two very very fine international T Twenty players. Aaron Finch at the peak of his powers is one of the best in the world. Uh, Stoyness is a highly sought after all rounder. Same with Mitch Marsh if he gets going like there. These are guys all with 
with definite international pedigree signing up to play in this tournament. So if, uh, if players of that caliber are already signing up to play in this American League, it's only going to be all bigger and better from here. Um, I don't know how many English players we're going to be seeing because at the moment I imagine that the uh, the tournament will be crossing over with their, um, their summer. So it'll probably clash with county cricket, it'll clash with the 100 and things like that. So we might not see the likes of Harry Brook uh, for a while, but um, the, they may end up shifting that because there's obviously a lot of very good English uh, T20 cricketers out there. So depending on whether or not there is a window for the United States to maybe allow um, English cricketers to be available remains to be seen. But um, who knows? You could We could see plenty of English players who aren't in international um, international teams make their way over in the coming weeks. Um, very, very excited, like I've been saying. Uh, this is something that I've been calling on, I believe, episode 9 or 10 of the of our podcast, which is, you know, 130-odd episodes ago now, um, was one of the big things I talked about was growing the game in the United States. So um, I will be watching uh, with massive interest and uh, when this thing kicks off in, I believe it's in June. Um, so... Yeah, well done to everyone involved. They've put a lot of work in getting this uh, off the ground and um, it, the only way it can go is up at the moment. So well done. Well done to everyone involved in Major League Cricket. Um, looking forward to seeing a fantastic product put forward um, and uh, hopefully hopefully, seeing many years of success and, and growing the game in the United States and make it a, a true global powerhouse. Well done, guys. Uh, until next time, uh, bye for now.